shaping for me is it's a therapy. People say like, ah, oh, but you, you don't shape anymore. You're not in the room as much anymore. I wanted to be in the room. I wanted to, that's when I turn on my music and I'm relaxed. I'm doing something I love. But as the business grow, you last and last in the shape room and more doing just the paperwork business stuff, you know? So that's why as the company grows, you spend too much time doing that stuff and it's just not cool. I wish I could be just 100% shaping in it. Started back in Brazil in the 80s and um, I wasn't professional on it. It was just, you know, going to school, going to college and just learning how to fix things. But just wasn't professional about it. I was just making a living off of it. But when I moved over here to go to school, then I had to get a job and that was the job that I got. The best thing about being a shaper, well, number one is being able to do your own boards. That's basically how I started to, you know, I didn't have the money to, to, to buy one, so I kind of peeled the glass off of one and just start, you know, tinkering with it. And the other side is just that you put your creative side to, to the surface, you know, you're always kind of a thinking about new things, new ideas, and, and that keeps you young, it keeps you alive, you know. For the most time, when I was younger, I used to have a killer board and I, I used to get a team ride, I said, oh, try this. And the guy was like, I can't ride this thing. I said, how come? It's too loose. And I was like, yeah, it's, but for me it works insane because, I mean, I'm skinny, you know. So I had to adjust for the pros. The guys are really strong, you know. But my boards in general for me and for the general public, they're easy to ride. They really fit on the pocket really easy. And, and you can kind of uh, maneuver, you know, in a way that's more on the pocket, I guess. 90%, you know, has always been into the high-performance surfing. I have to present in, in all my models something that the public needs or wants, you know, stubbier stuff, small wave boards, this and that and the other. This is the business aspect of the surfboard factory. So I do design aiming for these kind of clients, these kind of, uh, you know, different abilities of surfers. But when it comes down to the professional level, then it's a whole different uh, R&D and, and a process, you know. The main thing is, is have the team rider test my existing models and narrow to a, a small number of these models and then focus on working on these models, making the adjustments and, and narrowing to that magic board. You know, that's how it goes. Nowadays, boards are really tech, you know, and more and more with the, the different materials and all these things available in the internet, people have been reading a lot and digesting a lot of information about surfboard design. And, uh, and you see a lot of beginners, and sometimes they feel, they feel like they already know what they need, and, and, and they come to you with everything. You know, oh yeah, I need this volume, I need this, and then that. And I'm looking, it's like, not really, I don't think so, you know. It's like, no, but I want, it's like, all right, I'll do it, you know. So there's a couple of times that, that we did that, and the guy came back, so, oh man, I can't ride this scene. So I told you, you know. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that board? the process of shaping it, like when you originally got the email and how you went about what you were thinking about when you shaped it. When I got that email, by not knowing who it was, just having his what, eight weight, I think, and height, it was tough. There's so many different styles on the tour. There's, if it was Michel Bure, it, was, it would be a different kind of board. Obviously not just in the size, but it's just that these guys' surfing approach is, you know, different. But, you know, I, I figure, okay, He's going to West Oz, it's a good wave. I'm going to try a design that I know that the feedback's been really positive. So I did the Oliver Kirch model, which is the one that has a lot of rocker, you know, that he's been riding really good when the surf gets really nice and punchy. Philippe has been riding really good. That's one of the models that Philippe takes to the tour. So I just gave it a shot in the dark and said, like, I hope it goes, you know. So I don't know. We'll wait and see, <laughs> you know, what happens. As far as the surfboard market, where it's going, it's, it's hard to say, you know, because lately in America it's been tougher to get labor. You know, uh, back in the days, 20 years ago, uh, every ground would want to sweep up the floor and learn the trade. Now you have a hard time finding people to work. People just don't want to get dirty anymore. So, you know, I don't know. I hope, I hate to see manufacturing in America or in Oz transfer completely to, to China or to those countries. But uh, I don't know. I, I know I'll be always, that's all, this is the only thing I know how to do other than fishing. So I'll be just, <laughs> I'm just going to be making boards.